Hello there boys and girls, my name is Barry Kidd and today we're going to do a quick little Photoshop tutorial video where we're going to take and add window light and shadow from that window light in a photo that where it doesn't exist. Hopefully just do something a little bit fun. All right. Now, when we do something like this, we have to consider the light or the natural light that's in the photograph that we're actually working with and we have to try to cast that light in the same direction so that it looks realistic. Now, if you take this shot of Kelsey here, you see that the light is coming across from the left and it's creating a pretty heavy shadow on the right. All right? So, we're going to cast the light from the window in the same direction. Now, I've got a shot of a window here and let's take a look at it. You can't see anything because <laughs> I've actually already created the mask so that it would be effective. Right now, let me press shift and click on the thumbnail, and this is the window that I'm actually going to place on the photograph, right? So shift, and we can put that back again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this image over on top of this one, but instead of dragging it from here, I'm going to drag it from my layers panel over here so that we get the mask and everything with it, right? So let's go ahead and drop that back down, and yeah, and here's my image. Now, really quick, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to press shift and I'm going to hide that mask so that I can see my window. Now, one thing that we have to consider, whenever we place an image on top of another image, we generally want to use images that are comparable size or images that are going to work. For this to work effectively, I'm actually going to have to stretch or increase the size of the image uh, of the window image. And in most cases, that doesn't work very well because when you start stretching images, it starts to pixelate and, and it looks crappy. But we're only using the, this to create a mask to create the shadow. And plus, I'm going to put a pretty heavy blur on it. So for this particular instance, it's going to work just fine. All right. It's not always going to work, but it's going to work just fine in our case today. Now, I need to make this look like a window with light shining through it, or what it might look like if it had light shining through it. So I'm going to transform this. To do that, I'm going to press Control T as in Tango, or Free Transform. All right. Then I'm going to hold down the Shift key to constrain the proportion so that it doesn't, you know, stretch it all out and make it goofy looking and stuff like that. Now let's bring this down here, a little bit more over here. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, light doesn't necessarily come in at a straight angle all the time. So to do that, I'm going to right click inside of the transformation box. I'm going to choose perspective. Then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to alter the perspective of the window like the light is bending it. All right? Go back up one more time, free transform again, and I'm not really happy with it. It shrunk the image down much more than I actually wanted it to. So we're going to change that. And one more time, just to change this down, I'm going to press just right click inside it and hit distort. And then stretch it down just a little bit more. Now that looks like something that I'm going to be happy with. All right. And this is what the, the shadow and the light is going to look like on the image. Now that we have that, and you just play around. You, you just play around with it. You have to have vision. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've got my window set the way I want the shadow to pass through it, I'll press enter to apply that transformation and we're done with that. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to press shift on my keyboard and I'm going to click over here on the mask thumbnail one more time. Okay. Just to hide that. that. And once that's done, I'm going to press control on my keyboard and click on the... Um, and, and, and click on the mask. Well, let me control D to undo that selection. Okay, alt click and we're going to look at the mask. Now this is the mask that we actually have for the window. If you notice, it's very crisp from where I, where it was actually cut out of the photograph. All right, 
So we're going to press Control click one more time. Yeah, yeah, we did that like a charm, didn't we? <laughs> Alt click one more time to hide that. But what we want to do is we want to blur it. We're going to blur that so that the lines aren't so crisp. All right. So I'm going to press uh, Control click and click on the mask thumbnail over here in the layers panel one more time. And to blur this selection, I'm going to use Quick Mask. There's lots of different ways to do it, but I'm going to use Quick Mask because it's easy. I'm going to press, I'm just going to press Q as in Quebec on my keyboard, and that'll bring up the Quick Mask selection. Now I'm going to go up to Filter. I'm going to go, what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. Choose Gaussian Blur. And a little test run showed me that 20 worked out pretty good for this. It blurred it out just fine. Uh, let's give it a little bit more. That's too much. Yeah, let's stick with 25 for this run, right? So I'm going to press um, OK to apply that Gaussian blur to this particular um, mask. And then I'm going to press Q, as in quick mask, one more time on my keyboard. And that will transform this back to an active selection. All right. Now, we're done with the photograph, so we can go ahead and we can hide it, or we can even delete it, but I'm going to save it in case I screw up and need to come back. So right now, we're just going to cut it off so that we don't actually see it. Now, with the selection that we've made and the, and the selection and the, what do you call it, the Gaussian blur we applied to the selection, still active, I'm going to go down here to this little half moon thing at the bottom of the layers palette. you got a little light, a little dark side, all right? I'm going to click that, and that these are our adjustment layers. I'm going to choose a curves adjustment layer. All right now, when we do that with the selection active, you see that it automatically press Alt. It automatically takes the selection with it with the blur that we added to it, and it adds it to that layer mask or that 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 selection. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this here, which is the curves layer itself. I'm going to start increasing the increasing the contrast or the brightness of it so that now we actually see the shadow that's being cast from the window onto our model all right so we're almost done but it doesn't look realistic because this light wouldn't be over here she would be blocking that light right okay so we're going to go ahead and we're going to once again go over here to the mask we're going to select the mask here in the layers panel uh, what else am I going to do? I don't know. I'm going to press B as in Bravo on my keyboard to bring up my brush tool. And I'm going to press the right bracket key on my keyboard to make it pretty big. When I'm painting white. I need to paint black. So we're going to X on my keyboard to switch my foreground color to black. And we're going to paint over top of all this over here because this wasn't this wouldn't be here. It just doesn't happen. A little, little bit smaller brush. Okay. Now, if we look over here one more time, it's pretty bright down inside of her arm, and it wouldn't be there because that light wouldn't be there. And we're going to paint that out. We're going to give her a little bit heavier shadow down in here. And that shadow on here. And now, if we look, you can see that we actually have a reasonably realistic representation of what the light would look like. Alt click on the mask itself one more time just to get some fine detail in here. Huh. I'm not digging that. What's up? Oh well, that's gonna have to work for now. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. We got rid of that. Anyway, now we're done. If we, we have a reasonable representation of what light would look like coming into a window and casting these shadows on the wall and casting the light on our subject. Okay, we can increase, we can go in, we can increase the brightness here, clip, bring up the clipping a little bit, or re, reduce the opacity of it just a touch up here. But anyway, that's one way that you can do fun little things to your photo and create things and place things on your photo that really aren't there in the real world. Just a little bit of food for thought, and I hope you enjoyed this quick little tutorial. Y'all have a happy day, and I am out of here. Bye-bye.